Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion next to the gorgeous beaver pond. I'm psyched. The leaves are changing, and it's so pretty here. Um, late, though, I guess. There's no such thing as late with nature. Nature's on its own schedule, you know what I mean? But it's all beautiful no matter how you look at it. So my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am really um, pumped to have this discussion with you today on things limitless people know. So we started that conversation with the last one. And there are, because I try to keep these short because we all, you know, the bandwidth, especially after the Rona, I don't think anything more than 11 or 12 minutes is going to make it, right? Because people are just, heads are filled up, you know? So limitless people, there are certain things that, that we know. And and one is just not to, not to sort of curse what comes your way. And it can, man tough sell when we're in it you know somebody just even if it's even if it's you're, you know you're totally legit right and they just come out of the and they just pull the you know rug out from under you cause an issue at work that you know causes you know a trickle down of problems maybe embarrassment this that and just and, and just realize they realize that life happens for us not to us even if it feels like that in a minute, like, how could this happen to me? Blah, 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 blah. It's not saying it's not hard. No one is not saying it's like, it could be, it could be incredibly hard, incredibly challenging, but it's not like, uh, why did this happen to me? You know, poor me. What happened? Why this? I didn't deserve this. And that all may be true, but, or, and somewhere though, there's a reason because life does happen for us, for us to grow. And so limitless people, really get that and it's important to to know okay so that instead they look at things as an opportunity to grow because that is why we're all here right to learn to love ourselves and other people that's it and to drink out of a brook the rest of us might get beaver fever so we wouldn't want to try that but little g likes it and then, okay, so what, what kind of goes along with that not cursing the things that come our way, the old poor me thing, and why does this happen to me, even if it's legit, and looking for growth, is also when, you know, when people hurt our feelings, okay, limitless people get that um, no one can hurt our feelings. No one can hurt our feelings. Why? Because our feelings come from our thoughts. So if you give think think about that, thinking about thinking, it's called metacognition, right? Our feelings come from our own thoughts. Therefore, how can anyone else possibly hurt us? Like we have to let it in. We can't, we also can't be embarrassed by other people. Same reason. We have to have the embarrassed thinking. We have to allow the embarrassed thinking in order to feel embarrassed. Thoughts come first, feeling second. Foundation of Minecraft, right? And that's just plain true. And just as a reminder, I just actually did this with my students the other day. I said, you know, let's just say, you know, uh, to, to prove the point, we, uh, you know, thoughts come first, feelings come second. If we were to carve through Jonathan's very scalp and, to, and pull out his very brilliant mind with kindness and, and kindness and anesthesia and put it on the shelf in a big bowl of formaldehyde, what would Jonathan be feeling? And they kind of look around like, is this a trick question? Answer, nothing. Why? You can't feel anything if there are no thoughts. There are no thoughts if there's no brain. So that's that's the proof in the pudding right there. So limitless people get that. And, you know, of course, the famous Eleanor Roosevelt quote fits here too. No one can make us feel inferior without our consent, you know? And that is the truth. No one said it's easy, but it is that simple. And then, um, oh, and then Wayne Dyer, I have to give him a shout out because I go on jags with my greatest teachers and my, and my, I mean, they have like, I've all got a whole gamut. And right now, plus his, his voice is so soothing. It feels like a mental, like a mental massage kind of thing. So anyway, I was listening to him earlier and he talks about this very thing. And he says, think about it. Oh, gee, see somebody? No. Uh, just think about it. Somebody says, you know, they're in front of you or behind you or whatever. And they say, Hey, stupid. And you're not looking that way. And you just turn around. Think about that. Like they, they, they're calling me how they know I was coming and people do that. And now, you know, like it, it's it, like, we're biting that we're biting the hook kind of thing. And I, I thought that was also a good example. You know, like we don't just don't respond to people like that quietly effective and walk away. So another one is limitless people know that they have to get rid of the junk or the crap in their heads. And so that might be 
envy and jealousy, all this old stuff, old guilt, old shame, old blame, all of it because it takes up, think about it when you click on the computer. And this is actually a good example because for me, because I can see, I can like see it in my mind's eye right now because I do the videos, right? They take up lots of memory. So sometimes the processing will just slow down or come to a complete halt. And then I'll look at the drive and it's like the red is all the way to here. And there's this much more room for memory because it's all taken up with old videos. Well, that's a good uh, example, actually, because in a, in a cognitive, uh, you know, metaphorically, our cognitive space maybe totally, oh, that might be a bear, but it's okay. Um, our cognitive space might be totally taken up with old, old, old blame and shame and guilt and envy and jealousy and blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, perceived mistakes that we made when in reality there are no such thing as mistakes. Why? Because we are all just people. Better go this way because I heard a little bear communication. Uh, they sound like owls and make hoo noises. And so I heard a little hooing over there. Come on, Jay. Okay, so uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, get rid of the junk, guilt, shame. Okay, so we need to, to let go of all of that. But just like I do when I'm making videos, and I go in and delete a bunch of old ones that are already up on the channel and everything, and get rid of the old stuff, and then all of a sudden, I'm able to process the new stuff. And so, yeah, I didn't, didn't even plan that one. That rolled out of me because it was such a visual. And then the other ones with limitless people get, as far as relationships go... Even if you're married, which I had to sit with this one and really kind of think about it for a second. Got, got uh, hiking here. Is that even, even in a marriage, limitless people get that you're really always single. And I don't mean that in a, in a way that you're out carousing and not being loyal, of course. That's not it. In a committed relationship, hopefully you're both first to each other and loyal to the end and, you know, loving and kind and compassion and all that stuff we're talking about um mentally you know because human beings are complicated complex spirits right i mean we're and so it's so the point is that we're not bringing together or by by bringing together people we're not like merging into this one unified creature like body with two heads kind of thing we're still two separate people coming together otherwise like you sometimes you see um here, you complete me. It makes me think of those little necklaces that often little girls share in, like, fifth grade. And they're a heart, and she has one side, and her best friend has the other side. And that's very adorable, but also very middle school. You know, uh, or early middle school, or elementary, or whatever. And it's not like that. We each have half a heart, and each half a person. You're both two full, whole, and complete people, hopefully. Because the alternative of that is codependency where you, you need each other in an in a unhealthy way, right? In an unhealthy way. Mutual dependency, not codependency. That's what it is. Well, limitless people get that. They get that. It's not a situation of, oh, our, you know, relationships have problems. They're not so focused on, you know, we have problems. If there's going to be constant things to talk about and work through. But they don't, limitless people don't perceive those as these gigantic obstacles to conquer because they go into it knowing that we are both unique spirits and we think differently we act differently we dress differently we might like different foods we might we might like different movies there might be some of that that's the same because um people uh, that whole thing the opposites attract is actually a myth because people are attracted to each other who have things in common uh though not everything or you'd be the same person which you're not right so it's kind of fun you know, like, you know, I love listening to my husband about, he's a history buff, specifically the 20th century presidents. And I just love listening to all his stories. I know more about Harry Truman than your average person. That's his favorite. And I love that about him because I wouldn't, if he wasn't, you know, my beloved, I wouldn't know anything about any of that. And, and then he picks up a little bit of psychology too. And also, uh, he's an, he's more of an indoor guy. I'm obviously an outdoor person, and, you know, we're very different in some ways, but we get that. We totally get that. And, um, okay, so two healthy, independent individuals coming together to be mutually dependent, not codependent, but needing each other and being there for each other in a healthy way. And then also 
Limitless people are into the path of non-resistance or least resistance. We get that the, the Carl Jung said ages ago, what we resist will persist. It doesn't mean throwing the towel and be defeated. It just means to be listening, listening to the universe, source, God, however you call it, to really realize, you know, when you hit up against the speed bumps and the definitely the brick walls, that it's time to, you know, go a different direction, you know, kind of thing. Non-resistance, because the universe, God's source, has a plan for all of us. And we are real, limitless people. We are really good at listening. Does it mean we don't mess up? Of course it doesn't. We're, you know, we're just a little bit more tuned in because we're on the, we're on the path to just uh, fulfill our, our own unique purpose on this planet. I guess that's the best way to say it. So we're not fighting the universe. Limitless people are not fighting the universe. We're listening. We're listening well, hopefully. And, and following, you know, that inner voice, the whispers, as Oprah says. And then, I made little notes for me. I don't usually do that in the woods, sometimes. And then lastly, we, fig we know that for every quote-unquote problem, which again, there really aren't any. There's just things that come up we need to work on, things that nudge us. For every one of those nudges, there's a spiritual solution. And acceptance is usually the key. It doesn't, again, it doesn't mean throw in the towel. It doesn't mean be defeated. It means, you know, to accept the present moment, even if it's really rough, as this is meant to be right now. And in fact, I think it's John Cabot zinn who has the best definition of stress. I'm pretty sure it's him. And I love it. And this is definitely a limitless person thing to say. That stress is wanting the present moment to be something other than it is. You know, the tire blows or whatever, that's that's what's happening right now. And then when we accept it, things are, you know, we're sick, can't go to something. It sucks, but we get it that this is this is what's happening. There are no accidents. There are no mistakes. There are no failures. There's There are things happening exactly as they're meant to unfold. And and that's it. And as far as the, mis the failures and mistakes, those don't exist either. Because we are uh, just humans. Or sorry, we're spiritual beings in a human experience. We are just producing results, and the, does, the results we produce, you know, then got, you know land us in different directions that hopefully we're learning from if they're, if they're if we need to. But that's really it, you know. It just all, all unfolds the way it's supposed to. Okay, that's it. Things limitless people know. This is Kimberly Quinn and Giovanni <laughs> signing off from the beautiful Notch in northern northern Vermont. Have a mindful, limitless day.